Hi everyone, Nemo here. We've just hit a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely brilliant. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and join the club. Today, to celebrate this milestone, I'm going back to my roots. I'm looking at a video by Fair Mormon, particularly an episode of This Is The Show featuring Quaco and Brad. Given the copious amounts of videos uploaded to their page since, it feels like Fair is maybe trying to distance itself from these videos. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. Stick around to the end for some collaboration news, and let's get to it. One thing that seems to make people upset is the fact that temples exist, and the fact that Freemasons exist. We're straight into a straw man. People aren't mad that temples exist, and they aren't mad that Freemasons exist. It might be fair to characterize some people as mad, and they're mad because both these things existed within Joseph's life, but they've been told that one did not lead to the creation of the other. Well, this uncomfortable realization brought me to honesty. I'm here to admit to you that Joseph Smith made it all up. He plagiarized the Book of Mormon by copying a map on the back of the Declaration of Independence. The CES letter opens the temple chapter with a quote deliberately cut in half to paint a sinister picture of the church. This is the quote. Because of their Masonic characters, the ceremonies of the temple are sacred and not for the public. The rest of the quote says, but there's nothing disloyal in them as so often asserted, nor in their performance is there the slightest departure from the principles of decorum and propriety. The full quote doesn't make a difference. You're ascribing motive to Jeremy by saying that the quote was cut in half to make the church look sinister. But in reality, that quote serves to show that the leaders of the church acknowledge the link between the temple and masonry. So the second half does not add or detract from that. It's simply not necessary. It's a common thing to cry that quotes are taken out of context because the whole quote is not used. However, this is why references exist. One cannot reasonably expect that every time I wanted to quote a general authority, I provide the whole 40 minute BYU address or 15 minute conference talk as a quote and transcript. I include the references so that you can read the full thing for yourself, should you desire. And the onus to do that is on the receiver of the information to do due diligence. It's my responsibility to provide a sufficient amount of quote to provide context and serve the purpose of the discussion, which I feel Jeremy has done. Jeremy Runnels and his subreddit minions literally took out the second half of the quote to manipulate you. The letter essentially makes the argument that Joseph Smith copied Freemason ceremonies to create the LDS Temple Endowment Ceremony. It even quotes Elder Heber C. Kimball when he said, we have the true masonry. The masonry of today is received from the apostasy which took place in the days of Solomon and David. They have now and then a thing that is correct, but we have the real thing. This quote from Heber C. Kimball again serves to show that the link between masonry and the LDS temple ceremony is clear and present. In the church's Now You Know video on the topic, they say that members at the time when the endowment originated saw the parallels, particularly in the methods of instruction and clothing of the participants. I've already fact-checked that video and you can check it out in the link somewhere above my head. However, right after that, the CES letter asks the question, if masonry had the original temple ceremony but became distorted over time, <laughs> the LDS ceremony, why does the close remember the i 5 remember? Well, it does. Seeing as Quaku is more interested in ad hominem and mockery, I'll share with you the quote from the CES letter that he's now about to try and refute, despite not having the courtesy of actually letting you hear it first. If masonry had the original temple ceremony but became distorted over time, why doesn't the LDS ceremony more closely resemble an earlier form of masonry, which would be more correct, rather than the exact version that Joseph Smith was exposed to in his March 1842 Nauvoo, Illinois initiation? This is why Kimball's quote is so important, because it paints a picture that the masonry of his time has the odd thing correct, but the LDS church has the true masonry in its endowment. Jeremy then asks the question, if the masonry at the time of Joseph Smith only had now and then a thing that is correct, then why did the endowment so closely resemble it? And why did it not resemble an earlier form of masonry? What the CES letter doesn't do is support its claims. It's criticizing the church for the temple ceremony not being Masonic enough to match early masonry without actually mentioning anything from early masonry. Jeremy doesn't need to because he asks why it was so similar to the masonry of the time and therefore not resembling an earlier form of masonry. Solomon's Temple, whatever that may have been. Thanks to Heber C. Kimball's analysis that the masonry of Joseph's day came from an apostasy at Solomon's Temple, the true masonry would predate Solomon's Temple. However, as acknowledged by Jeremy and Fair Mormon, 
The Masonic rituals came from medieval stone tradesmen, not Solomon's Temple. So any earlier form of masonry that we may expect the endowment to represent, given Heber C. Kimball's claims, would be medieval at best. Jeremy Runnels and his subreddit minions are literally just saying stuff. Jeremy Runnels is adding in enough angry paragraphs and enough pictures and enough fancy words to make you think the church lied to you and Boyd K. Packer is the head of the Illuminati. This may be an attempt at humor, but to clarify, Jeremy is not trying to convince anyone that Boyd K. Packer is the head of the Illuminati. The CES letter says that Freemasonry has no links to Solomon's temple. It also says that it's a myth that Solomon passed down rituals into what would become Freemasonry. Here's the thing. The church doesn't claim it was. Individual people can come up with their own ideas and theories, but the church doesn't have an official position on that. I take your point, but it's a bit of a non-point all the same. I wouldn't expect our church to have an official position on the origins of another organization. The origin does matter though, not because the church is making some sort of false claim, but because it raises the question, if there's no connection to Solomon's temple, what's so divine about a man-made medieval European secret fraternity and its rituals? In other words, why does the endowment ceremony, so sacred to members of the church and essential for eternal salvation in the celestial kingdom, have so many similarities to something that is a secular fraternal society with no links to any ancient religious worship such as Solomon's temple? Besides, Elder Kimball claimed that the Freemason ceremony contained information during the apostasy of the days of Solomon and David. Essentially, the false things taught at that time is what the Freemason ceremony has. If anything, church leaders claimed that the Freemasons were wrong and tried to restore false principles. The church is claiming they restored the true principles. The time frame of this argument is ropey at best. Solomon's temple was built in 957 BC and destroyed in 587 BC. The origins of Freemasonry are placed around the medieval period, which is 500 AD to 1500 AD. That puts likely a thousand years between the destruction of Solomon's temple and the origins of masonry. And so to say the false things from the time of Solomon and David are what Freemasonry has, without a clear chain of custody for these things, is pretty ropey over the span of a thousand years. The CES letter doesn't even know what it's trying to criticize. This letter is more dishonest than John Dillon is about those faith crisis cruises he goes on. <laughs> What's interesting here is Kwaku said earlier about Jeremy just saying stuff, but then he goes on to make disparaging and unfounded claims of dishonesty towards John DeLynn and Jeremy Runnels. I'd forgotten just how much ad hominem was in these videos. The real goal of this section is to ask, why are there similarities between the Freemason ceremony and the LDS temple ceremony? Well, the first thing to know is that there many of these similarities actually predate Freemasonry. Things like anointing with oil are present in the temple and Freemason ceremony, and other Christian traditions, and Judaism, and like every other religion ever. I mean, did everyone steal from the Masons, or is there just a common theme we're all drawing from? No, oh, come on, Quaker. That's just what the Illuminati paid you to say. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> they don't pay me. Brad's point about what the CES letter is trying to ask is a perfectly clear and honest representation of what the letter is indeed trying to ask in that section. The real goal of this section is to ask, why are there similarities between the Freemason ceremony and the LDS temple ceremony? However, he then follows it up with a whopping great straw man. They go on to talk about anointing with oil, as say it is present in the LDS temple. That's some sneaky wordplay, because it is in a ceremony of the LDS temple, but it's in the initiatory, not the endowment, and it's the endowment that is under scrutiny here. Having been a temple worker myself, I can tell you that the cards which we read from to get the words exact every time have scripture references to the parts of the initiatory which are biblical. So it's well recognized that some parts of the LDS temple worship are biblical. But again, it's not the initiatory that is under scrutiny, it's the endowment ceremony. Moon symbols have been used far before the Masons and perhaps even Solomon. Special clothing belongs to almost every religion. Another straw man, mixed in with an appeal to popularity. The church has made this argument before in their video on temple garments, that other religions have sacred clothing and we are no different. That's perfectly fine. Brad and Kwaku are taking this argument and using it as a defense of the shared sacred clothing of the LDS temple and Freemasonry, which doesn't work because while it is okay that Masonry and the LDS Church both have sacred clothing, it is the similarity between that clothing that is the issue here. A similarity which members at the time of Joseph Smith readily acknowledged, as discussed earlier. 
Now, it's important to know that we Latter-day Saints treat our temples with incredible reverence, and much of the information contained in our ceremonies is only for members of the church who have made commitments to receive and understand the lessons taught in the ceremony. For non-members, the ceremony wouldn't make any sense, and they can make you feel out of place. And that's because you would be missing a ton of context. So we don't just blurt out everything about the temple. So many criticisms of the temple are false, but critical of certain ceremonies and information we don't feel comfortable discussing in a non-holy location. The CES letter makes use of those things and misrepresents them and the history. This feels like they're dodging. They're saying that the CES letter makes claims about parts of the temple which they think are too sacred to discuss, and so therefore can't refute. What's convenient is those parts just so happen to be some of the most Masonic parts of the endowment, some of which are no longer included, like the penalties for revealing some of the information learned in the temple. In my opinion, if Elder Holland is willing to talk to a BBC journalist about the penalties of the temple, that tells us that talking about these things is not off limits. Really, the big question is, did Joseph Smith use the Masonic rituals for the LDS Temple Endowment? Well, yes, and here's why that's actually really cool. Joseph Smith claimed to be a prophet, and his priesthood office was apostle. Whether you believe him or not, by claiming this, he gets to follow in the footsteps of those who were apostles in ancient times. The reality is the Lord gave Joseph Smith the information and revelation that mankind needed to know. The method of doing this was appropriated from the pagan Freemason ceremony, similar as to how Paul, the New Testament apostle, quotes a hymn to Zeus, Epimenides, Aratus, and other pagan philosophers. Basically, the Bible lays out a long history of prophets and apostles appropriating elements of cultures and religions already present and reforming them to restore or teach new principles given by God. Even do this outside of the Bible. Christmas was appropriated from the winter solstice. And, I mean, Halloween was appropriated from Samhain, the ancient Celtic holiday. Uh, and the CES letter was appropriated from People have been doing this forever, but for some reason when Joseph Smith does it, the rules change. So Joseph Smith did use the Freemason ceremony as the basis for the endowment. And because lots of other things have been adopted from secular and pagan practices, we shouldn't have a problem with it. I do have a slight problem. None of the things they quote as being appropriated from pagan or secular sources have been turned into the means by which someone will get into heaven. Christmas and Halloween, the teachings of Paul that include Zeus, these are not essential for your eternal salvation. The endowment is, so we are justified in wanting to be a bit more scrupulous about its origins than we would be about Christmas or Halloween. So yes, the temple endowment ceremony and the Freemason ceremony may have similar practices, just like a high school graduation and a police graduation have similar practices, but totally different meanings. So in closing, the temple teachings are true, but the CES letter isn't. There we are. I've had a four month break from these videos and uh, I forgot just quite what they were like. Now before you move on to another one of my videos, <laughs> Let me tell you what's coming up next week. Myself and Lewis from Numinosophy Academy are doing a live collaboration at 7 p.m. GMT. That's 1 p.m. MDT. Lewis does great work, and so if you haven't already, go subscribe to his channel. I'm really excited, so make sure you join in and get involved in the conversation in the live comments. Let me know in these comments if I missed anything, and so you don't miss anything, be sure to subscribe. Bye now.